ones. Good to see everybody. Good, good. Good to see you. Good to see so, everybody. So, um, so let me start off by saying welcome back. We had this wonderful little August recess. Um, not that we can really go anywhere and do much, but we had this um, wonderful August recess, which gave us a break from planning board and, get, and enabled us to recharge so that we could come back here, all hands in, on deck, ready to serve and ready to take care of business uh, on behalf of Prince George's County and the Maryland National Capital Park and Planning Commission and all of our 900,000 plus residents. Let's do this, okay? So, um, Again, an abundance of caution resulting from the um, global spread of COVID-19. This is the planning board's 19th virtual meeting since March. And during these continue, continued challenging times, we remain committed to promoting the safe and healthy environment for our public, for our applicants, for our stakeholders, and for our staff, while continuing business operations to propel Prince George's County forward. I'm taking a moment to remind everybody once again of the particip participation guidelines for our hearings. So they're depicted on the screen, speaker pre-registration and pre-submission of comments and exhibits is required, is mandatory. All participants must pre-register and all materials must be submitted by 10 a.m. on the Wednesday before the planning board as shown on the screen. Okay, news flash. Madam Chair. In the yes. Uh, before you continue, I would like to request a special point of uh, special privilege, uh, in conjunction with one of our our administrator, planning board administrator. Is Miss Jessica Jones available? She's she is there. Thank you, Madam Vice Chair. Do you have a moment? Yes. Thank you, Madam Vice Chair. Uh, my name is Jessica Jones, Planning Board Administrator and the Planning Board. Can you be heard? Okay. Planning Board. I'm here. What the heck are you doing? <laughs> Good morning, uh, Madam Chair and members of the board. Thank you for your indulgence this morning. Madam Chair, you have been an amazing pillar in our county. Back in March, don't look so shocked. <laughs> Back in March, when we were shut down to, due to COVID-19, the COVID-19 pandemic, you showed great leadership and determination to ensure that business moved forward as usual, well, as much as possible. You made sure that we continued to have our planning board meetings without much interruption. Um, you encouraged creativity among staff to come up with a way to conduct virtual meetings in an effective and user-friendly way. But besides continuing to hold planning board meetings, <laughs> we have to understand that the chair has a full-time job. <laughs> so besides planning board um, proceedings, she also um, had early, very, very many early morning meetings and sometimes all-day conference calls, putting out fires within the county. Um, in addition to long hours preparing for planning board meetings. Um, so what we'd like to do on behalf of the planning board office is to present a certificate of appreciation to, Be to Elizabeth Betty M. Hewlett for providing outstanding service and leadership to, uh, to the employees of the Maryland National Capital Park and Planning Commission and the citizens of Prince George's County during the COVID-19 pandemic. On this occasion, we recognize Betty for her distinguished leadership and untiring service <coughs> in maintaining compliance and conducting business activities through weekly virtual public meetings, providing su support and needed services to the youth and seniors throughout the county, including weekly mail distributions, while advocating for Prince George's to be proud to be counted in the 2020 census. Betty has strived to ensure the health, wellness, and safety of each commission employee and, ad and advocated for additional support and services needed to adhere to many safety protocols and measures necessary during these challenging times. On behalf of the Prince George's County Planning Board Office, we extend a heartfelt thank you and applaud Betty for her steadfast leadership, commitment, and dedication to serve and lead, lead with compassion and heart. We are proud and congratulate you on a job well done and for always giving your best in your service to others. Thank you, Betty. We got you this time. Yes, you did. 
Yes, you did. Oh, thank you. It's uh, this wonderful proclamation. Look at this a, a certificate of appreciation. It is beautiful. Thank you so very much. That was very, very sneaky, um, but wonderfully appreciated. I, I, it's just a very, very kind and wonderful, thoughtful, um, sneaky gesture. So I appreciate that. Absolutely, thank you for your leadership. Oh. I came all over, not to the to Zoom, but I'm grateful that you <laughs> made me come through. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Um, so I'm going to get back to my comments real quick, because I had said on the screen um, that all participants must pre-register and all materials must be submitted by 10 a.m. on the Wednesday before the planning board meetings, as shown on the screen. However, news flash, news flash, news flash. Listen up. Um, in the coming weeks, commencing with the October 1st planning board meeting, the deadline for exhibits and registering to speak will be 12 noon Tuesday before the Thursday meeting. So it's going to move ahead one day. And it's going to be Tuesday at 12 noon before the planning board meeting. So the deadline, so we're, there's no confusion, the deadline for the October 1st planning board meeting, the Thursday October planning board meeting, will be Tuesday, September 29th at 12 noon. This will be posted on our website. I will be announcing it. We need more time. We are discovering that we need more time to sift through the exhibits that are submitted uh, so that the planning board can get through them, so that we can get through them, so they can be disseminated, they can be posted. So we just need more time so we're not here until like midnight um, Wednesday night. So um, thank you, everyone. I will be announcing that. Um, register regularly. Registered speakers and presenters connecting through a computer, tablet, or smartphone can join via the link provided by the email in the email from the planning board office. Online registered participants may be prompted to install GoToMeeting software in order to participate. Registered speakers may also listen or participate in the meeting using a phone line with the call-in number provided via the email. We ask all participants to mute your phones when not speaking and do not put your phone on hold. To eliminate audio feedback, only one connected device with sound should be in a room at the same time. Of course, the public may continue to watch planning board meetings streamed live, or if you wish to become a person of record, you may sign up on our online web form, and please note the screen again for instructions. We thank you for your flexibility, cooperation, and support um, as we continue our, to keep our planning board functions moving forward in a safe fashion during our new normal. As always, we start with a moment of silence. Well, since our last meeting on July 30th, there were unfortunately many, many, many losses, many passings, too many to um, announce during this hearing. So um, there were victims of several tragedies, national disasters, and we're just going to share a few. We want to remember um, Lisa Smith and, and uh, Lena Smith, uh, Lisa Smith and Thomas Stevenson, sister and stepdad of Lena Smith, who works in the planning department. Um, so we want to remember Lena in our thoughts and prayers. Um, Jeanette Neal, who was the mother of Lindsay Neal and the um, mother-in-law of Stephanie Neal, who both work in the Department of Parks and Recreation. In Prince George's County, we want to remember Joseph Kitchen, who at the very young age of 34 was an educator, ad ad advocate for youth in underserved communities, and president of the Young Democrats of Maryland. We want to keep former councilman Floyd Wilson, who I believe was our first African-American councilman in Prince George's County. We want to keep him in our thoughts and prayers. Um, he lost five family members in Lake Charles, Louisiana during Hurricane Laura. We want to remember Pastor Henry P. Davis, the First Baptist Church of Highland Park in Landover, who lost his uh, father this past week. In, in the state of Maryland, we want to remember the inimitable Esther McCready, age 89, who was the first African-American woman to be admitted to the University of Maryland School of Nursing. She was an honors high school student who was denied entrance because of race, um, and, and she was represented by the NAACP, specifically the incomparable Thurgood Marshall. Um, we want to remember the, number, the growing number of victims of the widespread coronavirus. Um, in the United States alone, we're, we're um, at 200,000, and that's very, very, very problematic, and it's anticipated to get so much worse. So please, everyone, take good care. We want to remember Trini Lopez, age 83, who is a singer and actor, a singer known for his um, 
trademark song, Lemon Tree, very pretty. And he was also an actor in the film The, Thir the Dirty Dozen. Helen Jones Woods, age 96, um, the pioneering trombonist who played with the International Sweethearts of Rhythm, a history-making all-female big band. She was also the mother of Kathy Hughes, founder and chair of Urban One Broadcast Media Company. Throughout the nation and the world, we mourn the loss of the amazing, humble Howard University graduate who headlined Black Panther, the none other than Chadwick Boseman, age 43. He was the first superhero, it was the first superhero film to be nominated for an Oscar, and he reprised that, ro that role in several uh, Marvel's Avengers movies. He was known for his roles in the um, biopics of um, notable African-American figures. He, number 42, he played Jackie Robinson. Get On Up, he played James Brown. And in Marshall, he played um, Thurgood Marshall. Um, Hal Singer, also the jazz saxophonist, age 100. John Thompson, Jr. We lost many, many sports figures in the last about five or six weeks. So I'm just going to highlight a few. John Thompson, age 78, Hall of Fame basketball coach, Washington, D.C. native, who elevated Georgetown University basketball team during his 27-year tenure. And he was the first African-American coach to lead a team to the NCAA championship. Gerald Schur, age 86, who was the founder of the Federal Witness Protection Program. He served in the U.S. Justice Department under Attorney General Robert F. Kennedy, and he was assigned to the Organized Crime and Racketeering Section of New York. But he devised um, the Witness Protection Program. Gerald Carr, age 88, astronaut for NASA's Apollo and 12 missions, um, known as the man behind the mic for Apollo 12, when the rocket was struck by lightning with it within 30 seconds after takeoff. Um, he was the commander of Skylab 4, which was the precursor to the International Space Station. Wilfred Brimley, age 85, known for his roles in Absence of Malice, Cocoon, The Firm, and he was a champion in fighting diabetes and promoting Quaker oatmeal. And then finally, um, Santa Claus. Yes, Santa Claus. Santa Claus was a, Philadelphia, a Pennsylvania native who portrayed Santa for over 50 years, and he endured a nine-year battle to legally change his name to Santa Claus. And he looked just like every picture that we've ever seen of Santa Claus, and he was a popular picture, picture at malls, including the Mall of America in Minnesota. Um, and of course, we extend, and, and there are many, many more, and we, of course, we extend our deepest sympathy to all of you whom, or any of you who may have suffered a loss of a loved one or friend, too, and our hearts go out to you. If we may have that moment of silence, please. Thank you. Um, so now I have announcements, um, and I don't have my announcements, okay. Um, so first, it is the month of September. It is National Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. Um, prostate cancer is the most common form of cancer in men. And it is the second leading cause of cancer deaths in men. The good news is the earlier it's detected, the better the odds of successful treatment. No symptoms exist in the early stages, which means the way you find out is by getting checked. So, men who are, the men on our planning board, the men in this room, the men who are in our viewing audience, the men who are in our listening audience, please make sure you get yourself checked regularly. And women, please nudge them again and again as necessary. It is also National Sickle Cell Month, National Suicide Prevention Month. I have to mention suicide because it is a major health issue and it's amongst the leading cause of death in the United States. And that's very, very problematic, particularly now when we are all struggling emotionally, mentally, financially, in every kind of way, in terms of loneliness, isolation. So please make sure you um, keep tabs on people that you love. And if anyone is experiencing any troubles, there are hotline numbers that you can call. So um, it is also National Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month, Thyroid Cancer Awareness Month, Leukemia and Lymphoma, Lymphoma Awareness Month. So please make sure you get ch uh, checked out. Um, 
September 10th um, was the famous Leopold and Loeb case when teenagers, Leopold and Loeb, were, who were very, very smart, decided they could kill somebody. They wanted to commit the perfect crime. It was awful. And they picked on a little neighbor, little Bobby Franks. And that's when they committed that murder. 1955, September 10th, it was the premiere of Gunsmoke. 1966, the Rolling Stones appeared on the Ed Sullivan Show. And I might say that Mick Jagger is still dancing his way through, through after all these years. Um, the Supremes achieved their seventh number one hit, You Can't Hurry Love. 1967, U.S. National um, Championship Women's Tennis, Billie Jean King defeated England's Anne Hayden Jones. Lots of U.S. Open Championships on this date, so therefore we have to talk about Serena. Have y'all been watching Serena? Serena has been really, really um, kicking hind parts, and she advanced to the semifinals after winning the quarterfinals against um, Piran. Uh, I can't even say Piran Akova. And um, she now has made 11 straight U.S. Open semifinals, and we're really, really pleased about her and her successes. And then I want to give a shout out to Prince. George's own, Francis TFO. He's only 22 years old and he trained right here in Prince George's County at the Junior Tennis Championship Center in College Park. His dad worked there on the crew that actually built the Tennis uh, Championship Center. When completed, his dad was hired there. Watching the people play tennis, his dad said, okay, I, I started kick hitting tennis balls with his sons at age four. At age five, um, the dad had the foresight to provide the lessons to Francis and his twin brother, Franklin, And at age five. Um, he made it to the fourth round of the U.S. Open. He is, his is a beautiful story of determination and work ethic. And he did so well in the U.S. Open. He didn't, he didn't win in the end, but he got so far as the fourth round after recovering from COVID. That's determination. That's sheer will, and that shows you what, um, what you can do when you try and when you have that good parental influence as well. Um, so also we want to, um, okay, it, tomorrow is the anniversary of the 911 attacks. And so we want to pause and remember the victims, the emergency responders, the families impacted and forever changed by the events of September 11th, 2001. We were all changed, but it was the beauty, uh, it showed a country um, determined to rally for its citizens. It shows our determination and our survival. So we want to remember those who were lost, remember those who died in the aftermath, having been some, the first responders who were subjected to the fumes and the toxins um, afterwards. Um, and, so, and, and thank goodness they are now able to get the funding that they need for treatments. Um, we also want to acknowledge that it is as of September 15th through October 15th, it is Hispanic Heritage Month. Um, we always want to remember and celebrate the, those um, of Hispanic and Latinx uh, heritage. And the Commission's Department of Parks and Recreation will host a variety of online activities to highlight the historical figures and to celebrate the diversity of our Hispanic Latinx culture. I'm asking you right now, save the date. See that on the screen. Um, Saturday, September the 19th is the virtual kickoff celebration, and there will be a panel discussion on voting, the importance of census, <clears throat> the history of the Hispanic um, Latinx community in Prince George's County. There will be cooking demonstrations, dance, and musical performances, which you can watch via Facebook or YouTube. Next, in the planning department, um, the Bowie, Mitchellville, and Vicinity Master Plan exist Existing Conditions Report virtual presentation will take place on Wednesday the 16th at 7 p.m. So look at the slide on your screen for online registration address. And the meeting will highlight the major findings, the key challenges, and the opportunities for the Bowie, Mitchellville, and Vicinity Planning Area. More details, visit pgplanning.org. And finally, it's that time of year again. The 2020 budget forums are coming up. The budget forums this year for the first time will be held virtually. The public is invited to provide comments on the um, commission's budget for planning for, and for parks and recreation in Prince George's County. Um, what you would like to see included in our budget, but we must remember these are gonna be very challenging times. So really think carefully about what you would like to see and what's realistic for our budget. 
The public is invited to provide those comments. Um, they will be Tuesday, um, September 29th, and Tuesday, uh, October 13th at 7 p.m. And that will tell you how to um, register, pgplanningboard.org, pgplanningboard.org. Next, this is crucial. The census deadline, the deadline to complete your census was um, moved up from October 31st until September 30th. Today is the September the 10th, so we only have 20 days to complete our census. The response rate is not great. It is 67.8% in Prince George's County. That's the self-response rate. So the enumerators are knocking on your door. We need for you, it is, we are beyond playtime here. We need for you to tell your friends, your neighbors, and to complete those forms um, by phone or online or with that QR code. Um, you can go to my2020census.gov or dial 844-330-2020. It is imperative. Tell everyone, text 10, count 10, tell everyone you know. Make sure your, um, your um, faith-based community knows. Make sure your, well, your elected officials know. But we are doing a serious last-minute 20-day push. Make sure you are counted. And finally, uh, no, Washington, we want to talk about the other good news is the Washington football team. First of all, they play their first game against the Philadelphia Eagles on Sunday, September 13th, right here in Landover. And they will finally have a new name, which is to be determined. And they will, um, um, and the other news I want to report is they changed the name of the street by the stadium to Sean Taylor Road after the team's player who was murdered by intruders who broke into his home in 2007. The Department of Public Works and Transportation is finishing the new street signs, which should be up in time for Sunday's game. Um, and then one more thing we want to say. Um, a, a, a huge event took place on Sunday, September the 6th. And that was a certain vice chair had a big birthday, and we want to acknowledge our own vice chair, Darcy Bailey, and wish her a spectacular, had continued birthday celebration. We love you. You are amazing. You have contributed decades to Prince George's County as a citizen activist, as a council member, as a council chair, as a vice chair of the planning board, on the Learn Foundation, and every, on a side on the Asala board, every single thing that you have done for the benefit of the residents of Prince George's County, the 900,000 plus residents of this county have no idea how lucky they are to have a Dorothy F. Bailey in their lives. Happy birthday, Dorothy! Vice Chair! She's muted. She's, she's talking. Wait a minute. Let's unmute her. She's the, Thank you. Those pictures are wonderful. <laughs> we had so look at that look at that early picture there, and uh, we we uh, you know you know I saved that one from way back, and we oh my God. and then we Madam said, Chief, she looks the same. She does look the same. Right. And, she looks the yeah. same. And the picture on the right I took when you were receiving an award, and the one in the middle I took just to be mischievous to show you got a real fun fun mischievous side. So, sure, you made me wear that outfit. <laughs> yes, and you look very good in it. So happy birthday. I don't know if our colleagues would like to say anything. Thank you. <laughs> I've known I've known the uh, chair, vice chair Bailey for many years. One of the first things, and matter of fact, we're coming up to an anniversary of it. Uh, Madam Vice Chair called me and said, Nanny, will you say the names of those people? who were killed in 9-11. That was my first real contact with her, and, and uh, we've been friends ever since. Thank you, Vice Chair, and happy birthday. Thank you. It was, indeed. It was, indeed. Okay. So, um, and without, if there are no other comments, without, and then look, may the celebration continue. So without a, further ado, we're going to go ahead and do, and get to our um, meeting, call, call our cases. Um, but it is good to see everyone. We, again, we thank each and every one of you for um, your for your um, patience, for your resilience, and ask that you stay safe 
and continue to work with us. Um, we're very, very appreciative of all that you have given to us. Um, and we ask that you stay safe and look out for each other and stay resilient and stay woke and remain ever hopeful as we strive to get through these challenging times together. Um, okay, with that, we have, I'm going to turn to the agenda. I want to make sure I do a roll call. So I know we have our five commissioners on the line. I can see them. I also see we have Peter Goldsmith, Senior Counsel. Um, we have our uh, Planning Director in here with us as well, Andre Checkley. We have our Technical Hearing Writer with us, Lee Kratka. And we also have our um, uh, um, Kenny Flanagan, who's running all the slides, um, a senior planner who's working everything over there. So if anything goes wrong, you don't blame me. No. Okay. We have Ryan Prawn in the back, too, working it. And we have our planning board administrator here as well, um, Jessica Jones. So with that, I'm going to turn to item one. We have a resolution of appreciation for Captain Stephen Lawless, who has worked with us with the Park Police for many, many years. He's given so much in terms of his um, leadership, working his way up through the ranks of our Maryland National Capital Park Police, um, to, and given so much to this community. He's earned the trust of this community. And if we could have a motion for, um, to approve his resolution, it would be greatly appreciated. So move, Madam Chair. We have a motion from Madam Vice Chair, second by Com um, Commissioner Washington. All second. Right? Okay. And um, um, Madam Vice Chair? Aye. Commissioner Washington? Aye. Commissioner Dorner? Aye. Okay. And, uh, and Commissioner Geraldo? Aye. May I say, without um, going into too much detail, that Commissioner Dorner, it is wonderful to have you back with us. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we also have our consent agenda items, item 4B and 4D. Um, now, item 4D, I just want to make sure that um, we have um, Heather Delapolsky on the line. Are you on the line? Someone's yep, I am. On? Just, just monitoring. Oh, okay, hold on a second. I'm, I messed up. I said all in favor? Oh, I did the vote. I had a motion and a second, but no all in favor? They said aye. Yeah. Yeah, they did. I went through. I called each one. They did. Okay. Just see? Yeah. They did. So the ayes have it. Yeah. That's the part. Okay. Sorry. It was 5 0. Okay. So now, item 4D. Ms. Della Polsky, are you on? Yes, I am, Madam Chair. Okay. Did you just sign up just in case? Do you have any issues? Yes, exactly. Just in case there are any questions. Okay, thank you. And, and so we have Chuck Schneider and um, Tom Masog and Brian Barnett Woods, just in case as well. Okay. With that, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda items 4B and 4D? Or? Madam Chair, move the consent agenda items 4B and 4D. Um, second. Okay, Vice Chair Bailey's motion, um, Commissioner Geraldo, second. Is there any discussion? All in favor, indicate by saying aye, Madam Vice Chair. Aye. Commissioner Washington. Aye. Commissioner Geraldo. Aye. Commissioner Dorner. Aye. Okay, the ayes have it. Thank you. Five zero. Okay. Now we also have um, item five, um, and then from after item five, we'll be going to item eight. Um, the proposed designation of of uh, one Prince George's County historic site, which is the Teed House. I want to make sure we have everybody we need, which I think is simply Thomas Gross and Howard here. Berger. Howard Berger? Here. Okay. Yes, so, here. Uh, wonderful. So we have both of them. So um, whoever is presenting, you can proceed. Thank you, Madam Chair uh, and members of the Planning Board. For the record, Tom Gross, Historic Preservation Section. The item before you is the proposed designation of one property as a Prince George's County Historic Site. This is the Teed House, documented property 66-0-7-50, located at 4505 Beachwood Road in College Park. This evaluation process was initiated by and has the support of the property owner. On April 21st of this year, the Historic Preservation Commission recommended uh, that the property be designated as a historic site. This was after receiving staff's recommendation and testimony uh, in support of the designation from the property owner. This HPC recommendation was the basis for a joint public hearing, which was held on July 14, 2020. 
uh, at that time, the district council and the planning board received uh, staff's recommendation, the recommendation of the Historic Preservation Commission and testimony in support of the designation from the property owner. Section 29-12001 of the county code requires that within 30 days of the record close of the joint public hearing, the planning board shall transmit its um, recommendation in the case to the district council. So that is the action that is before you today and staff is ready to answer any questions if you have them. Um, are there any questions of Mr. Groves? Um, let me see the board. I don't see any hands raised. There's no questions. Okay, I'll entertain a motion. Madam Chair, I move that we uh, accept staff's recommendation and transmit the letter to the district council. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Washington, um, seconded by Commissioner Geraldo. Commissioner Dorner's mic is off. Um, okay, um, um, Madam Vice Chair. Good eye. Commissioner Washington. Aye. Commissioner Geraldo. I vote aye. Commissioner Dorner. Good eye. Thank you. Um, okay. Um, next we have item eight, which is um, a preliminary plan reconsideration for Willow Ridge Estates. Let me make sure we have everyone. Um, Sam Braden. Was I remiss before yes, not announcing that we had Peter um, Goldsmith in there? Okay. No, you, you mentioned him. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Braden. We just have an announcement, though. Okay. M Mr. Braden. Good morning. Okay. Good thank morning. you. Ms. Connor. Good morning, President. Good. Mr. Maysock. Present. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, with that, Mr. Braden, you are on. Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the Planning Board. For the record, I am Sam Brayton IV from the Subdivision and Zoning Section. Item number eight is a reconsideration of preliminary plan 4-05027 Willow Ridge Estate. The subject property requests a reconsideration of condition 14 and finding eight related to specific transportation improvement at the intersection of MD223 Woodyard Road and Old Ferry Road. This proposed development is, is for residential development consisting of 28 single family dwelling units. Slide two, please. The site is located in the southern region of Prince George's County in planning area 81A in Council District 9. Slide three, please. More specifically, the site is located half a mile west of the intersection of Dangerfield Road and Woodyard Road at the end of Canberra Place. Slide four, please. The subject parcel is located in the rural residential RR zone and surrounded by commercial and residential uses. Slide five, please. This map shows that the subject property and the surrounding property are located in the MIO military installation overlay zone. Slide six, please. The aerial map shows that the subject site is currently not developed and also shows existing surrounding property and roadway. Slide seven, please. The site map shows that the typography on the site is mostly level with slopes at the center of the site. Slide 8. Master plan right of way map shows the master plan collector roadway, Dangerfield Road, runs to the east of the site and shares an arterial roadway with Woodyard Road. Slide 9, please. Slide nine shows the preliminary plan of the southern region of the proposed development. Slide 10, please. Slide 10 shows the preliminary plan of the northern region of the proposed development. Slide 11, please. 
This slide shows nearby transportation improvement affecting the subject site. These areas are indicated by red stars to the northeast, Pearl Harbor Gate, and southwest MD5 and Surratt's Road of the site. Slide 12, please. Slide 12 shows an aerial view of MD5 and Surratt's Road in March 2002. This is prior to the construction project. The third northbound lane started 900 feet approaching Surratt's Road, and the third northbound receiving lane north of Surratt's Road ended after 1,100 feet. Slide 13, please. This slide shows an aerial of MD5 and Surratt's Road in July 2003. This is during the construction project. The third northbound lane was reduced to less than 400 feet approaching Surratt's Road, and the northbound receiving lane north of Surratt's Road was reduced to 800 feet. As a result, the capacity of the intersection was reduced during construction. Slide 14, please. This slide shows an aerial view of MD5 and Surratt's Road in May 2005. This is after the construction project where significant improvements were made. The third northbound lane started 1,700 feet approaching Surratt's Road and the northbound receiving lane north of Surratt's Road. Slide 15, please. Slide 15 shows an aerial view of MD5 and Surratt's Road in February 2006. This imagery shows a second northbound and southbound lane, southbound left turn lane constructed in 2005. Slide 16, please. Slide 16 shows an aerial of Pearl Harbor Gate at the Andrews Air Force Base in May 2004. This imagery shows a fence along the west of Dower House Road that prohibits access to Pearl Harbor Drive. Slide 17, please. Slide 17 shows an aerial of Pearl Harbor Gate in 20, 2016. Here is evidence of grading that shows construction of Pearl Harbor Drive gate access to Andrews Air Force Base. Staff recommends Revision to Condition 14 of Resolution 06-65. This will include restriping northbound Dangerfield Road to create an excessive, excuse me, an exclusive left turn lane. Adequate access will exist if the application is approved with conditions consistent, consistent with the above findings. This concludes staff's presentation. Um, thank you, Mr. Braden. Let's see if the commissioners have any questions for you, and then I'll come back to the, the and critical name that I forgot to call on. <laughs> okay. Um, Madam Vice Chair, any questions? No questions. Uh, Commissioner Washington? No questions. Uh, Commissioner Dorner? No questions. Commissioner Geraldo? I don't have any questions, Madam Chair. Thank you. So with that, I'm going to turn to Mr. Haller, and I'm glad I can see that you're on since I didn't call you earlier. Mr. Haller. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, and welcome back from your well-deserved break. I hope uh, everybody is relaxed and ready for the fall. Getting there. Um, I represent the uh, owner of the lots comprising the Willow Ridge Estate Subdivision. Uh, this subdivision was approved in March of 2006, uh, subject to 18 conditions. Uh, the condition that is the subject of the request for reconsideration is condition 14, which required the applicant to make improvements at the intersection of Woodyard Road and Old Alexandria Ferry Road. Uh, the inability to secure right-of-way to make these improvements, as well as the cost of these improvements, have, de have prevented the development of this subdivision for the past 16 years. As the board is aware, these same improvements were imposed on other subdivisions in the vicinity which were approved approximate in time to this subdivision. In particular, the same condition was imposed on the Belfont subdivision, which is referenced as preliminary plan 4-03118, which was approved in 2004. As the staff report notes, when the Willow Ridge subdivision was filed, a traffic study was not required 
since the project generates less than 50 a.m. and 50 p.m. peak hour trips, the most recent counts available were those from that Belfont subdivision, and so these were the basis for the traffic analysis, which was conducted by staff and included in the staff report. Last year, the planning board approved a reconsideration of the Belfont subdivision and found that the road improvement condition was imposed in error and revised the condition applicable to the Belfont subdivision. Based on that action, uh, we have filed the, and requested reconsideration of the same condition for Willow Ridge for the same reasons the planning board endorsed in the Belfont subdivision. Uh, we agree with the staff's uh, report and their analysis, as well as the findings contained therein, and we request the planning board approve the staff report and revise condition 14 as listed in the staff report. I'll be glad to answer any questions that you have. Thank you, Mr. Haller. Uh, Madam Vice Chair, any questions? No questions. Okay. Um, Commissioner Washington? No questions. Commissioner Dorner? No questions. Commissioner Giraldo? No questions. Um, there was no one else to speak on this matter. I don't, Mr. Masek, I don't know if you had anything to add. Madam Chair, I really have nothing to add. Okay. Um, thank you, then. Um, is there a motion? Madam Chair, Commissioner Washington, I, I move that we uh, accept the recommendation of staff and approve the reconsideration of preliminary plan 4-05027 uh, uh, as embodied in PGCPB resolution number 06-65 uh, and amend finding 8 and condition 14 as outlined in staff's report. We have, second, Commissioner Geraldo. We have a motion and a second. Um, Madam Vice Chair? Aye. Um, Commissioner Washington? Aye. Commissioner Geraldo? Aye. Commissioner Dorner? Good eye. The ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, five thank zero. you so much. Um, Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Um, before I call the next case, I, there was one more moment of silence that um, I wanted to add, and that was for actress Diana Rigg, and many of you of a certain age will remember before there were the Marvel Avengers that were televised and in movies, um, with their comics were already in existence, there was a different Avengers, and, um, and, and Diana Rigg played Emma Peel in the Avengers, and she was a fabulous, fabulous actress, and she died this morning. So we want to remember her as well. Um, with that, I'm going to turn to item seven. And item seven is a reconsideration of preliminary plan 4-90, um, no, 09041 for Beach Tree, the CSC parcel. I do want to announce that I will be recusing myself from this because I was involved in the original matter um, from my position in the private sector at that time. So I will be departing and Madam Vice Chair will take over for this, por this portion. Thank you. Don't go too far. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the board will now hear the reconsideration of preliminary plan of subdivision 409041 for Beach Tree. Uh, the preliminary plan was approved by the planning board on January 13, 2011, and the resolution was mailed on February 15, 2011. The applicant previously recorded requested a reconsideration for that of that approval for conditions 7, 12 and 13A through D. That request was granted at the plan board meeting of July 9th, 2020. Today's hearing is on the merits of that request. I would like to see if we have the following staff members online and prepare to address the board. Uh, Tom, are you on? Tom Sivers? Yes, ma'am, present. Uh, Tom, pronounce your last name again for me. Sivers. Fevers, I thought that was wrong. Thank you. Sherry, Con yeah. Sherry Connors? Present. Sherry. Are there any yes. other staff joining us? Okay. Next, I would like to confirm that the following representatives of the applicant are online. Uh, Robert Antonetti? Uh, I'm here, Madam Vice Chair. Okay. What about Arthur Horn? Uh, I'm here on behalf of Arthur. What about William uh, Anthony? Mike Lenhart? Present. Uh, 
present. Okay. Dan Jackson? Present. Okay. Is there anyone else who signed up to speak on this item? Did I miss anyone else? Did I miss someone? Madam Vice Chair, Tom Mason of the Transportation Planning Section is here. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Sivers, we're ready for your pre presentation. Yes, ma'am, thank you. Good morning. Uh, Madam Vice Chair and members of the board, for the record, I am Thomas Sievers, Senior Planner with the Subdivision and Zoning Section. Item number seven on the agenda is a reconsideration hearing of the merits for Beech Tree CSC Parcel 4-09041. The subject PPS was approved based on a mix of retail uses totaling 300,000 square feet of gross floor area. The subject request is for the reconsideration of conditions 7, 12, and 13A through D of PGCPB resolution number 11-02CA-2, which are related to the trip cap and associated transportation improvements. Slide two, please. The site is located in the east central part of Prince George's County within planning area 79 and council district six. Slide three, please. More specifically, the site is located south of Leland Road and west of US 301 Crane Highway. Slide four, please. The subject site is located in the Commercial Shopping Center CSC zone. The site has RS zone properties to the south and west, EIA and RR to the north, and OS to the east beyond US 301. Slide five, please. The aerial photograph shows the surrounding properties and roadways. Slide six, please. The site map shows the varied topography on the site. Slide seven, please. The master plan right of way map shows major collector Leland Road abutting the property to the north and freeway US 301 abutting the property to the east. A portion of the proposed master plan industrial roadway I-300 can be seen further to the west of the subject site. The commercial parcels approved with this preliminary plan of subdivision have all been platted, but development has not yet commenced on the site. Slide eight, please. This slide shows the critical intersections that were originally studied for the development denoted by the red targets and shows the PPS boundary outlined in blue. Subsequent to the approval of the PPS, the applicant reviewed the possibility for constructing a gas station with a food and beverage store, and at that time determined that the trip cap was not sufficient to accommodate the proposed use. Even though the square footage for the use is small and no other development has been constructed due to the presence of the fuel pumps and the nature of the food service within the store, the, the use is trip, trip intensive during peak hours, especially in the morning. Further review of the PBS case file indicated that the site development plan showed a building configuration very similar to what is depicted for a food and beverage store with gasoline pumps. Given that other recent cases had indicated that gas stations with food and beverage stores should be analyzed separately from general retail centers, staff agrees that the trip cap for PBS 4-09041, shown in condition seven of the resolution, should have taken into account the specific commercial use of a gas station with food and beverage store, in addition to the general retail uses based on the evidence in the record. As a result, staff is recommending an increase to the trip cap and modifications to the associated transportation improvements at the critical intersections of Leland Road and Morris Plains Boulevard, as well as Oak Grove Road and Church Road. It is noted that the reconsideration of preliminary plan 4-09041 does not affect any other conditions approved by the planning board for any other application applicable to this site. The subdivision and zoning staff recommends that the planning board adopt the findings and approve the reconsideration of conditions 7, 12, and 13A through D as found in resolution PGCPB number 11-02CA-2 for Beach Tree CSC Parcel 4-09041, subject to the amended findings and conditions contained in the staff report. This concludes staff's presentation. Thank you, Mr. Sievers. Uh, 
Are there any questions from the board? Uh, Mr. Dorna? Commissioner? Mr. Dorna, you have any questions? No, ma'am, no questions. Ms. Washington, Commissioner Washington? Uh, questions? No questions, Madam Vice Chair. Mr. Geraldo, questions? Okay, I think you're on mute. If we have no questions, then we'll turn to Mr. Antonetti for your presentation. Good morning, Madam Vice Chair, members of the board. Uh, for the record, my name is Robert Antonetti with the law firm of Ship Plane Horn. Pleased to be here on behalf of the applicant DOB Limited Partnership uh, for this reconsideration merits request. Uh, today with me virtually, uh, we have Mr. Uh, William Anthony from BOB, uh, Mr. Dan Jackson, the civil engineer uh, for the project, and Mr. Michael Lenhart, uh, traffic engineer for the project. Um, before I start, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Sievers for his review of the case and his well-crafted and uh, thoroughly described uh, recommendation. Uh, this case is a merits hearing, as stated, is stemming from a reconsideration request based on other good cause uh, that was uh, thankfully granted by this board on July 9, 2020. Uh, as Mr. Seaver's presentation and staff report mentions, the request today is to make appropriate modifications to conditions 7, 12, 13, A through D, and finding number 8 set forth in the resolution of approval for preliminary plan 4-09041. Without belaboring the, the items, um, I think Mr. Sievers did an excellent job, and the memo does a, a, a fantastic job describing the changes recommended for the uh, conditions uh, mentioned, as well as the associated findings within the resolution. Uh, in essence, the shopping center that was approved through the preliminary plan uh, did contemplate uh, the ability to have a gas station with food and beverage store. Um, unfortunately, the traffic report that was, uh, or study that was submitted with it, did not break out that use as an independent use, which was, uh, which was the custom at the time um, the preliminary plan was approved. Now that we have, uh, fast forward now to nearly 10 years later, uh, we do have limited interest from a pad site user who uh, would, who would need to impact the trip cap, and our analysis now shows that uh, essentially that one use. Um, could essentially exceed the entire cap for the entire shopping center. Um, we quickly realized that we have a big problem here, uh, mm -hmm. and we came to the board to ask for, for your assistance, and um, you accommodated that request by allowing this hearing today. And the staff report um, you know, does, I think, a very fair and accurate job describing what the request does in terms of changes to the cap uh, and associated uh, findings. I will say that the trip cap increased um, while it, uh, since it does generate more um, trips in theory uh, to the U.S. 301 CIP corridor, uh, which is in, within the six-year funding window, that increase uh, is, uh, we impact an increase slightly greater because we are now asking for an increase in our trip, in our trip cap. As a result, condition 12 does have a pro rata increase commensurate with the trip cap increase for our financial contribution to that. So um, this, we're really not asking for a free pass here uh, with regards to um, paying our fair share for the U.S. CIP intersection improvements. Uh, again, as I stated back in July, uh, and it goes really almost without saying, the, the retail market was in a significant shift prior to this pandemic. Uh, brick and mortar stores were um, really falling by the wayside and uh, in, a, in a new balance, rebalancing of interest using uh, logistics and last mile uh, internet type um, commerce sites such as Amazon, et cetera. COVID-19 has changed the dynamic even more. You've seen the, uh, the bankruptcies filed by you know, stalwarts uh, such as JC JCPenney's uh, and, and others. Uh, and uh, big retail is, is really shifting and we don't quite know where the landscape is going to take us. Uh, this reconsideration gives Beach Tree a chance to pursue pad site users that uh, could could you operate under a revised cap and bring some retail amenities to a Greater Beach Tree project, which is uh, one of one of the best, if not the best, uh, residential projects in the entire county. Uh, so, with that, we greatly appreciate your uh, consideration of this request. Uh, we do thank the staff for their recommendations. 
uh, and and modify conditions. We agree with them 100 percent, and uh, we would uh, in, uh, respectfully request your support uh, for this application and the changes set forth there. Um, so we are here to answer any questions you may have. And again, we thank you for your time. Today. Thank you, Ms. Antonetti. Are there any questions from the board, uh, Ms. Washington? No questions. Mr. Donner? No questions. Mr. Geraldo? No questions. Okay, if there are no further questions, uh, we will entertain a motion. Madam Vice Chair, Commissioner Washington, uh, I move that we adopt the findings of staff and approve the reconsideration of preliminary plan 4-090-41 to amend finding 8 and conditions 7, 12, and 13A through D of PGCPB resolution number 11-02CA-2. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, let's call the roll. Mr. Dorner? Good aye. Ms. Washington? Aye. Mr. Geraldo? Vote aye. Motion carries. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Um, Wonderful job, Madam Vice Chair. Thank you. <laughs> That's how she rolls. Okay. Um, so um, thank you. I am back. And the next item on the agenda is item six, which is um, basic plan eight, uh, amendment eight dash eight five eight nine dash oh four Bowie Newtown Center. I'm going to check and make sure that we have um, everyone on. Um, Eddie Diaz Campbell. Okay. Um, um, Welcome back. We hadn't seen you for a while, so we ha welcome back, and, and we hear good things for you too, right? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. So congratulations. Uh -huh. You want to t take this moment to tell us about your addition? Uh, yes, I have a, a son now, my firstborn. Uh, his, oh. uh, his name is Edison, and he's almost six months old now. Oh, oh great. great. Wonderful. So we're glad to have you back, and congratulations on the birth of your of your new son. Um, uh, you know, and as um, Commissioner Warner can tell you, and others may remember, uh, uh, um, uh, it's it's just wonderful to bring a new child into the a new um, living being into the world. So congratulations on that, um, and hope you're getting some sleep now. Um, yes, I am. Um, Sherry Connor, are you on? Present. Okay, wonderful. Mr. Antonetti? Present, Madam Chair. Okay. Um, Ms. Finch? Present. Uh, Mr. Burton? Present. M Ms. Smith? Present. Mike Linhart? Present. Uh, Mr. Vizzi? Uh, you have uh, Joe DeMarco in from Mr. Okay, so we have Joe DeMarco. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Orsini? We see. Which uh, one? He's present. I'm back. Yeah, I see him. Okay, okay, got it. Um, Mr. Ferrante? Present, Madam Chair. Uh, Mr. Perez? Present, Madam Chair. Um, Mr. Stevens from the City of Bowie? Yes, good morning, present. Good morning. Was there anyone that I missed? I don't think so. Um, I will say that we have two exhibits for this particular case, too. We have the um, applicants requested um, amendments to the conditions of approval, and also we have the, um, the um, staff's um, uh, September 4th memo regarding the applicant's requested conditions. Okay, so with that, I'm going to turn to Mr. Diaz Campbell. Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. For the record, I am Eddie Diaz Campbell, Senior Planner with Subdivision and Zoning Section. Item number eight on the agenda is the basic plan amendment for the Bowie Newtown Center. 
Specifically, A-8589-04 is for the former Sears parcel within the regional retail portion of the town center. The proposed amendment allows 670 new dwelling units above those previously approved by the basic plan, which the applicant intends to use to construct mixed use development on the Sears parcel. Next slide, please. The site is located in the northeastern part of Prince George's County within Planning Area 71B and Council District 4. Slide 3, please. More specifically, the site is located on the northwest side of Evergreen Parkway and on the south side of Maryland 197. Slide 4, please. The subject site is located in the Major Activity Center, or MAC zone. To the north is Maryland 197, with single family, multi family, and office development beyond. To the east is the commercial park school at Evergreen Parkway, with multi family and townhouse development beyond. To the south is another portion of Evergreen Parkway, with a stormwater management pond at Bowie City Hall beyond. And to the west is commercial retail development in the regional retail portion of the town center. All the surrounding properties are also in the MAC zone. Slide 5, please. The aerial photograph shows the current layout of the core of Bowie Town Center. The Sears parcel is at the eastern end of the regional retail portion of the center, an open-air mall containing numerous businesses. The Sears was once a anchor for the mall, but is now vacant. The project proposes to raise the vacant Sears building to make way for new mixed-use development. A restaurant occupying the same parcel is proposed to remain. The aerial photo also shows the surrounding single-family, townhouse, multi-family, and office buildings. Slide 6, please. The site map shows that the topography is generally flat and occupied by impervious services. Slide 7, please. The master plan right away map shows Maryland 197, Narteo Road, Mitchell Road Road, which is an arterial south of Maryland 197, and a collector north of it, and Excalibur Road, collector road. The applicant provided a traffic impact study with this application dated December 2019. Based on this study, staff finds that the existing master plan roads will be adequate to carry the anticipated traffic generated by the development, based on the maximum proposed density. The traffic impact of the development will be further evaluated at the time of comprehensive design. Slide 8, please. This photo shows the bird's eye view of the clearest possible. Slide 9, please. This plan shows the overall basic plan area including the regional retail center and the surrounding townhouse, multi-family, and office development. The series parcel is highlighted in red. The basic plan was originally established in 1975 via the Bowie Cullington Master Plan and Sectional Map Amendment adopted that year. Since then, the basic plan has been amended several times. The the dollar limits for the overall area are from A-8589-C, adopted in 1988. They include 1,225,000 square feet of commercial, 900,000 square feet of office, and 1,420 dwelling units. There is significant unbuilt capacity in the commercial and office categories, but there are only 130 dwelling units left unbuilt of the approved residential capacity. Slide 10, please. This plan shows the Sears parcel in detail. No specific development layout is given at this stage in the planning process, but the existing buildings and a proximate circulation pattern are visible. The applicant seeks to permit an additional 670 dwelling units specifically on the Sears parcel, adding to the 1,420 units previously approved for the overall basic plan area. The applicant also seeks to build the 130 residual units from the previous approval on the Sears parcel, so the these units cannot be reserved for their parcel. Should the applicant be able to build all the, resi all the residual units as well as all their newly requested units, they will build a total of 800 units on the Sears parcel. Now can I say that the units to be built may be a mix of multi-family and townhouse units as well as assisted, assisted living facility beds. Since the process is mixed use, previously approved unbuilt commercial and office space may also be built on the Sears parcel. Staff does have concerns about the proposed density of the project. The MEC zone has a maximum density of 47.9 dwelling units per acre. Should this application be approved, the overall density of the MAC zone at Bowie Town Center will increase from 14.12 to 20.79 dwelling units per acre, which is within the limit. 
The density on the Sears parcel of Stipley, however, may rise as high as 74 billion acres per acre. The Sears parcel is positioned within the retail center area, where a higher density may be appropriate. The context of the design will be needed to ensure an appropriate transition to the surrounding land uses. The project will be evaluated for, for context sensitivity at the time of comprehensive design plan. In conclusion, the Southern Ocean Zoning staff recommends that the planning board adopt the findings and approve the basic plan amendment A 8589 04 of the Sears parcel at Bowie New Town Center, Southern Ocean conditions contained in the technical staff report. The applicant has provided proposed revisions to conditions of approval contained in the report. Staff concurs with the proposed revisions, which are included on the record. Finally, the City of Bowie City Council met on September 7th and voted to recommend approval of the application and thorough consideration. We are expecting that a member of state staff will be able to present these considerations during the public hearing. The city communicated their recommendations to planning staff and to the applicant, and the applicant in turn said that they did not object to adopting the consideration. Our staff also do not object to adopting the state's considerations. This concludes staff's presentation. Are there any questions of Mr. Diaz Campbell? Madam Vice Chair? No questions. Commissioner Dorner? Yeah, just a quick question. Okay. So with the density units um, being 74 for the secret parcel versus 47.9 for the red, we're not approving that at the moment right now. This is just conceptual of it at the time, right? I'm sorry, Commissioner. I didn't clearly hear the question. Okay, so you mentioned that there's um, the, the maximum sort of intended density of 74 um, dwelling units on the Sears parcel. But then if you take it in context with the rest of the um, the mall kind of area, it would come out that I think you said 47.9. We're not actually approving that at the moment right now. It's, that's just sort of conceptual what they've communicated to you, right? That's correct. Okay, cool. All right, thank you. And congratulations on your, your newcomer. Good luck on the sleep. <laughs> Commissioner Washington? No questions, but I too congratulate you, Mr. Diaz Campbell. <laughs> Commissioner Geraldo? I, I have no questions, and I'll just ditto congratulations, okay. Mr. Diaz Campbell. Wonder, wonderful. Okay. Uh, with that, I'm going to turn to Mr. Antonetti. Uh, good morning again, Madam Chair, members of the board. For the record, my name is Robert Antonetti with the law firm of Shipley and Horn. We're pleased to represent here it is SRC Finance LLC regarding this application request. Today with us on the meeting, we have Robert Ursini, uh, representative of Searage. Uh, we have Mr. Joe DeMarco, uh, civil engineers with Bowler. Uh, we have Mr. Michael Lenhart, Lenhart Traffic Consultants. Uh, we have John Ferrante, a land planner with Shipley and Horn. And we have Mr. Tony Perez, a uh, consultant on the project. Uh, I, too, want to thank uh, Mr. Diaz Campbell for his review and his work on this application. It's greatly appreciated. I'd uh, also like to thank, uh, oh, give him congratulations on the birth of his son. I uh, was preparing for this case this morning, and my, my youngest, 11-year-old son, gave me a hug and a kiss uh, for no reason, which was greatly appreciated. It warms your heart. Then he uh, proceeded to eat half the food on my plate, so if I'm a little short on uh, first, uh, I'm right now. But uh, with that being said, um, yes, we're here to request the Fourth Amendment to the Basic Plan for the Bowie New, Bowie New Town Center. So the project was placed in the MAC zone in 1975, and it included the approval of the initial Basic Plan. I've seen images from uh, uh, from citizens that they've dug, uh, that have been dug up in the city of Bowie uh, that show some of the early concepts uh, that. Uh, was associated, I believe, with the Levitt Company uh, for the Bowie Newtown Center, and it was incredible. It look, looks like it was out of the future. Very, very, you know, tall buildings, uh, very dense center. Uh, I, I believe I even saw a monorail, something of that nature. It looks like something that was really out of the future you'd see uh, down at the Epcot Center almost um, in Florida. Uh, but lo and behold, there's been a long path from 1975 to 2020. Uh, the project... Um, of the Bowie New Town Center includes the MAC zone as part of it, uh, 246.4 acres of land. Uh, again, the initial basic plan was amended in 1982 and then in 1988. 
1988, the basic plan approved uh, the land use quantities were, uh, stated in the staff report, and I'll just restate them again. Uh, for commercial retail, approved 1,225,000 square feet of commercial retail, 900,000 square feet of office uses, and 1,420 residential units. Today, um, if this application is approved, ultimately, and we hope that it will be, um, there would be a residue of commercial retail of 441,468 square feet. Um, that would include the removal of the existing two-story, 125,000 square foot Sears building. 529,500 square feet of office would remain. And um, uh, today, there is 130 residential units left over from the 1988 cap. Our application is intended to amend the basic plan only for lot six. Lot six is what's in front of you, which is the Sears parcel, uh, or the former Sears parcel. It's 10.8 acres. Again, it, it includes the empty Sears building, which closed, I believe, in January of 2019. Um, it also includes the BJ's Brew House restaurant, which will remain uh, as part of this application, will be part of the mix of uses, uh, ultimately, that will come forward and the later steps, including CDP, preliminary plan, uh, and specific design plan. Um, this amendment specifically seeks to designate lot six within the retail core as an appropriate location for a mix of uses, including residential uses. Uh, since the current uh, approved basic plan has an am ample surplus of retail square footage and office square footage, there's no change to those numbers. Um, we are requesting an, an additional 670 residential units uh, for lot six, when coupled with 130 remaining units with total 800 possible units as a maximum density. It isn't a proposal for any specific density. Um, if I could for a moment speak to the density and how it's determined in the MAC zone, uh, it is based on uh, the gross residential acreage in the MAC zone. There's over 100 residentially designated acres within the MAC zone within the Bowie New Town Center. Um, Mr. Diaz Campbell gave the updated number. Um, I know at one point he commented um, and with regards to the density on this particular parcel, but that's not how the density is calculated for the zoning ordinance. Um, in fact, if you think about it, there are other multifamily buildings in the Bowie New Town Center. If we only looked at density for the specific parcel in which a, a, you know, uh, a residential building is located, you know, you would look, you would have kind of an artificially high residential density for those parcels as well. Um, but we do look at the whole uh, pursuant to the MAC zone requirements and, uh, you know, our density be well below the recommended density both in the zone, which can go up to 47.9 uh, dwelling units in the zone. And if you added that, uh, multiply that out, you, you would have over 4,000 residential units uh, in the Bowie New Town Center as a possible maximum. Uh, the remaining maximum here with this proposal, if it were approved, would be slightly over 2,000. So um, that being said, we are very cognizant of being part of a whole. Um, Mr. Diaz Campbell, is it possible to go back to slide five for a brief second? <clears throat> Thank you. I want to go to this slide to just comment on the Bowie Newtown Center and, and, and what it is today. What, you, what it is today is essentially a, a rather diverse mix of uses, uh, which is incredibly well amenitized. Um, here is the retail core with our parcel, uh, lot six, highlighted in red. Um, this property uh, is very well suited for an introduction of a mix of use, including residential uses, to really give the retail core a 24-hour presence. What makes this so special, and I think unique um, within uh, other offerings in the county, is that uh, it is not a green field. <clears throat> in other words, this is an already developed project. It has incredible amenities uh, within walking distance. Immediately to the south, you have the beautiful City of Bowie City Hall, which offers uh, you know, direct access to city services, including the, including permits, um, <clears throat> the planning office, uh, the council, and uh, and the city police department. Um, to the west, uh, you have uh, a variety of uh, of retail amenities, which are incredibly walkable, inline stores. You also have a Macy's Anchor, 
Uh, you also have um, food and beverage opportunities, including restaurants, sit-down restaurants, as well as a very, uh, a very large Safeway um, within walking distance of this site. Um, there's also the Bowie Health Center to the west, the Bowie Senior Center, the Bowie Gymnasium, a fire EMS. Uh, there is a park and ride um, uh, for, for mass transit uh, on the north side of Collington Road, uh, in addition to other office uses within that area. So what, um, you also have the property surrounded by a significant transportation network, which developed over, over the years and has been improved over the years, offering quick access to US 50 and quick access to US 301. So with that being said, what's being re um, requested as here is a mixed use anchor to replace uh, an empty store, which you know could have a, a cascading impact on the fortunes of the balance of the retail core if something isn't done quickly. Uh, Mr. Ursini who, um, in the, has made presentations to the public and the city of Bowie talking about Syracuse's uh, uh, philosophy regarding their properties. They have a portfolio of many over 200 former Sears and Kmart stores throughout the country and their number one priority being, uh, being a publicly traded company is, um, is to find a way to maximize cash flow through their assets. Their first option always is finding, finding someone to relet existing facilities. In other words, having another tenant come in when, uh, when one tenant leaves. They've been trying for over five years to find a tenant to go into this large box. Um, large box retail has, has changed, as I mentioned in my previous presentation. Uh, but also, too, this building is unique because it's a two-story building. Being a two-story building of 125,000 square feet, it's very hard to divide um, into smaller stores. Uh, so that being said, the lack of response from the market and the, and the need to be uh, to, to do something with the site to contribute to the success of the overall town center really has led us to uh, request and pursue in earnest a mix of uses, including residential uses, on this site. We do intend that there will be retail um, and there's the possibility for office on here as well. Uh, we don't have a specific program just as of yet. Again, this request is meant to really sh um, expand the universe of possibilities uh, that we can then take to the market and come back uh, hopefully with a partner uh, with a very innovative and, uh, um, innovative and creative mixed-use anchor that will go on this site that will be a, a real shot in the arm for the entire Bowie Newtown Center uh, and help uh, help it grow and thrive once again. Um, with that being said, uh, we are very pleased to uh, have the opportunity to interact with the city of Bowie, uh, both through their stakeholder meetings, their uh, Bowie Advisory Planning Board, and through multiple hearings with the Bowie City Council. Uh, on September 8th, I'm pleased to report that the uh, Bowie City Council endorsed the, uh, the approval of this basic plan unanimously. It was a six to nothing vote. It would have been seven to nothing, but due to technical difficulties um, in our virtual world, one, one member who was a, a staunch proponent but wasn't able to vote. Um, but that's significant. Uh, the Bowie City Council is, is very careful about what development uh, that they support, and they support smart growth. They have requested certain considerations to be added to the approval of this plan. They've also requested that the density be reduced from a maximum of 800 units to 600 units. Uh, after discussion with our client um, and further discussion with the representative of the city of Bowie, we are supportive of their recommended changes. Uh, Mr. Frank Stevens is on the line. I don't want to steal his thunder. He will uh, present the language um, in it, uh, which uh, with a modification of the letter that should be in your backup. Um, there's some slight modifications to that language, but he'll, he'll present that. And I, uh, but we uh, provided that it's consistent with what my understanding of that language would be. Uh, the applicant would be supportive of that change. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't point to the September 4th, 2020 memo, uh, which should also be in your backup material outlining the modest changes to the conditions from the staff report. I just, just as an aside, uh, I think this is a, uh, where this can be done in the future, this is, this is a wonderful evolution of, of uh, clearly showing what changes an applicant um, desires plus coupling it on already with the staff's um, uh, analysis of those requests. So it reads very well. So um, I'm very thankful to 
uh, have, have this document as part of the record of our case. And we would urge your support for, for, these, for these changes. Um, I can go into any of the changes if you feel that's appropriate, but um, I do think that the, the, the memo also is quite descriptive and, and um, may have already answered any questions you may have. Uh, with that being said, we, we do appreciate your consideration of this request. Um, repositioning this parcel is, is a high priority, not just of us, uh, but of the other uh, other folks that are in the area, including uh, the, uh, the City of Bowie Council. Uh, we are looking forward to bringing something to you with greater detail. Our next step would be the comprehensive design plan, which, you'll, which you will hear uh, in the future. It will have uh, many of the uh, considerations that the staff mentioned in the report and many of the considerations that the Bowie City Council uh, like, would like carry forward. That this will be reflected in the urban design standards set forth in that comprehensive design plan. Um, and, you know, we'd love to bring that to you as soon as possible because the, the longer that this property is um, largely vacant, uh, you know, the longer, uh, you know, any possible negative effects from that, um, you know, could could impact the, the viability of the entire center. So um, we're looking to move forward with alacrity. And again, we look forward to coming back to you with these future applications, um, hopefully uh, to uh, get your support as we move forward in the entitlement process. So with that being said, our team is really here to answer any questions you may have. Um, we thank you for your time. And uh, we would appreciate uh, your support of this application. Um, OK, thank you, Mr. Antonetti. So you have a good list of people um, and who are here just to answer questions. So let me turn to um, our board and see if they have any questions of you or any of your experts. We have um, um, Mr. Orsini. We have um, the, uh, Mr. Perez from La Perez. Uh, is it L.A. Perez or La Perez? L.A. Perez, a consulting company? That, that's correct. That's correct, L.A. Perez. That's okay, correct. LA Perez. Thank you. Okay. Um, and, uh, um, and also, we have Mr. Lenhart um, from traffic, the traffic consultant, and Mr. Vizzi from Bowler Engineering. So let me see if the board has any questions for any of these folks. Uh, Madam Vice Chair? I don't have a question, but I, I, Mr. Antonetti referenced a letter regarding 600 units from the, I think, Bowie City Council. Okay, hold on, hold on a second. Um, let me stop you for a second, because... Mr. Stevens, I haven't called on Mr. Stevens yet. Mr. Stevens will be able to speak. We do not have a letter from the city of Bowie for other reasons. So, um, but Mr. Stevens can he can summarize when when we call on him. I, right now, I just want to see if you have any questions of the other folks. Okay. Oh, I thought I had a letter, and that's what I was looking for. Thank you. No, very you much do not. You know, no. Okay. Um, um, so, so that was it for you, Madam Vice Chair. What about? Um, Commissioner Washington. Uh, no questions, but I did have the same question as Madam no, Vice Chair. I was no, looking for that letter. No, please. you can't. Yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's a deadline. Let me put it that way. Okay. Um, okay. Commissioner Dorner. Yeah, I just want to see if, um, I, I know that this is more conceptual at this point, Mr. Antonetti, but if you could provide additional kind of ideas of how you intend on potentially um, developing out this area. Um, because I, I think one of the, uh, the questions is sort of the density um, and whether or not it's too much. Um, so if you, if you could provide us a little bit more of, a, of an overview about how we're sort of going to contextually put it in place. Um, and since you mentioned Florida as sort of the, the reference back to, to Bowie and its initial kind of development, um, I'll, I'll throw a Florida reference, it's not Orlando, um, but I'll, I'll throw a Florida reference out to you that has some of the similar kind of tenants um, it, it, it's an open air kind of mall area that was developed around um, a lake, and they have residential um, kind of condos abutting some of the, the stores. Um, if you just Google residences at, at Coconut Point, that'll give you kind of a, an idea um, down in, in Estera, Florida, how they've done um, at least that sort of infill um, development right around an anchor. There's a, it's a Dillard's down there and not a Sears. Um, but they developed um, residential area right around um, kind of a, a mall area and, and, and the lake right next to it as well. Um, but that just sort of like, as I was looking at this floor plan, I, it, it, or the site plan, it made me kind of um, remember that when I was walking through that area a couple of years ago. Um, so can you give us a little bit of an idea of, of what you plan to do? 
Uh, sure. Th thank you for that comment. And I, and I did make a note. Uh, Coconut Point was the name of it. Yes. It's a bunch of condos that um, that are called the residences at, at Coconut Point that are right up against an, an open mall area that's it's very similar kind of in, in, in design. It's a bit bigger than what you've got here, but they did the same thing with kind of um, contextual and bill. Right. Uh, well, yeah, thank you. We, we will we will look at that. Um, uh, yeah, I think what we're, what we're trying to do here um, is is have the opportunity to have residential and retail primarily coexist within the same parcel. Uh, the the way that would look, we envision that the residential units would be on the south side of the parcel that's outlined in red, closest to the city hall. Um, that would offer opportunities for a greater visual and pedestrian connectivity with that seat of government within the municipality. Um, right now, the city hall's front door looks at the back door, the service side of the Sears building. Um, in fact, we we had met with, um, the city of Bowie has a Bowie green team, um, which uh, they're committed to uh, kind of green, uh, sustainable design uh, for projects in the city. And uh, we met with one of their subcommittees, which is a multimodal subcommittee dealing with pedestrian and transportation opportunities. And uh, one, uh, as I mentioned uh, at the city council, they came prepared. They they had the pedestrian network kind of spread out within a certain radius of, of this site. And what we quickly determined uh, through the documents they pulled together was it was almost as if um, everything pedestrian-wise from sidewalks, trails, cities, networks, kind of lead to the Sears site itself. And it's almost as if when the Sears building was designed, it was almost placed as a block to kind of cut that off uh, from connectivity to the north or, or from the north to the south, whichever direction you're, you're pointing. Um, so we think that residential, uh, we believe in concept, and it has to be laid out uh, through the later stages, that the residential offerings would be on the south side of the site primarily. And the north side would be the opportunity for retail um, and or office or office and retail combination working together. It is only a 10 acre site. Um, if 800 units, uh, which potentially is 600, if, um, if the, the board endorses the, the revision um, suggested by the city, which we don't object to, um, the denser you get, uh, you're looking at multifamily offers. Um, and that if you go to 600 units, um, it, is, it is likely that you would be in a position where you would need um, structured parking uh, to support that. So uh, I think at its densest, the residential would have um, residential surrounded by structured park. I mean, sorry, structured parking surrounded by residential units, with the possibility of retail on the first floor uh, for um, for for those units. Um, the um, to the north, uh, you would also have the possibility of again commercial retail office. Um, or even a hotel use. And depending on uh, how much interest there is in those uses and how much square footage uh, could go there, uh, you'll either be looking at um, uh, uh, structured parking or surface parking. Um, I did mention that the DJ's restaurant, which this board approved, um, oh, sorry, uh, which was approved as part of an SDP revision for the retail core back in 2017. Um, that took the place of the of a closed Sears Automotive Center. It was raised, and on the same footprint, this uh, new restaurant was there. Um, prior to COVID-19, that restaurant was doing incredibly well. Um, I'm hopeful that it's still doing well, but you know, uh, we're we're they're they're still open and moving along. But they we could see also that there could be additional pads um, within the retail area there. Um, hopefully offering uh, our, our intent to have high quality residential restaurant offerings, which was the feedback we had gotten from the community uh, when we interacted uh, on possible uses here. Uh, and, you know, folks in Bowie, you know, really want, you know, white tablecloth, high quality places to eat. And um, they, there just doesn't seem to be enough of that to support the, I'm sorry, enough of that um, to meet the demand that the population of the city wants. So. Um, I know I've talked about all different types of possibilities. Uh, one I didn't mention in terms of residential is there's also the possibility of townhomes um, here. Now, townhomes um, do take up more land area, and we only have a 10-acre mm -hmm. site. Um, if that's the the level of interest that we get from market partners uh, in developing this site, then it's possible townhouses could be as part of this. 
on the south side as well. Um, we still envision the retail side being on the north side of the main drive aisle um, that's there, uh, or office or, or, or hotel. Um, so uh, we don't really know um, what the final picture could be, but that I think kind of gives, uh, I hopefully presents the palette of possibilities um, that could be there. Uh, we hope for the, the densest project possible, um, really to, to maximize this place, uh, to create a sense of place here, um, to give that in, you know, injection of, of vitality, uh, not only to this parcel, but to the entire retail core. Okay, yeah, thank you. That, that was helpful. Um, and yeah, I mean, I really, you probably want the densest place because that also maximizes return on income for or investment for that. But sure. I, I would encourage you to also keep in mind the surrounding residential areas. Um, I like the idea of, of, of the residential on top of the retail or, or more the family on top of the retail. I think it's, it's a good kind of mixed use um, and actually more on the mixed use in terms of building up um, in density as opposed to having sort of like separated mixed uses um, with townhomes and, and, and other units um, on, on the lower, I guess, the separate structures and not sort of mixed use in, in terms of going up. Um, but yeah, I, I would check out, I would encourage you to check out the other community. It's not, it's not necessarily walk, walkable friendly um, down in, down in this area of Florida. Like there, there's still way too much probably asphalt around that area. But they did a good job of kind of mixing in residential with some high-end um, restaurants and other stuff in that area. So I look at the thing we have um, later on. So thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, thank you. Commissioner Geraldo, any questions? No questions. Um, okay, so looks like there's some good opportunities there. Um, the, the, um, the seasonal Halloween store won't be there anymore then, but okay, I'm gonna leave that alone. Um, <laughs> Um, okay, so with that, I'm going to turn to um, Frank Stevens, representing the city of Bowie. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. For the record, Frank Stevens from the city of Bowie, here to review with you um, basic plan amendment A858904. Uh, the Bowie City Council conducted two public hearings on this case, first one on August 3rd, and then the second one on September 8th. Uh, during those two meetings, the council focused its discussion and attention on the importance of this project being a mixed use sustainable project. Uh, it was important to the council that the, uh, that the project be integrated with the rest of the commercial retail component of the Bowie New Town Center. And the council recognized uh, the changing nature of retail and expressed its desire for high-end retail and restaurants within the new development. At the conclusion of the hearing on September 8th, the council voted to recommend approval with, uh, with several items that I'll, uh, I'll read to you now and we'd like uh, incorporated into the record. The first is a maximum of 600 units may be provided within the development on lot six. Secondly, workforce housing is to be included as part of the project on lot six. The percentage of workforce housing units within the, within the development on lot six will be established at the time of comprehensive design plan review. Thirdly, the development of lot six shall utilize a high quality design that fully integrates the proposal with existing uses within the retail component of the Bowie New Town Center, including the application of multimodal and placemaking techniques, green and open space, and the use of local and native plant species. And finally, the applicant shall consider the viability of active adult housing on lot six at the time of comprehensive design plan review. Uh, this concludes the city's uh, comments and presentations. I'll be happy to answer any questions if there are any. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stevens. Um, let's see if the board has any questions of you. Uh, Madam Vice Chair? No questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stevens. Commissioner Washington? No questions. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Dorner? No questions. Commissioner Geraldo? 
No questions, Madam Chair. Mr. Diaz Campbell, do you have anything in response um, to uh, Mr. Stevens' position for um, for the city of Bowie? Um, yes, I do have uh, one question for uh, both uh, Mr. Stevens and uh, Mr. Antonetti, by way of clarification. And um, I see Mr. Antonetti has deigned to join us. Uh, so we're so happy to see you. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Diaz Campbell. Um, yes, so uh, we aren't sure what it's clear that uh, the that uh, the city of Bowie's recommended uh, considerations for uh, uh, workforce and active adult housing, as well as the uh, utilization of a high quality design and uh, and green open space and place safety techniques are uh, considerations that they are requesting that do not quite rise to the level of a, of a condition of approval. However, I am I'm not 100% certain whether the same is true of a uh, reduction to 600 dwelling units, whether the outcome is with an agreement that that would be a, uh, a hard limit or simply a consideration made at the time of later plan, the same way as the other two are. Mr. Uh, if, Mr. Antonetti. If I could, uh, yes. This, this is Robert Antonetti. Um, my understanding is that the first uh, dealing with density um, would be a condition which would then modify the land use quantities table set forth um, in your September 4th, 2020 memo. So uh, that would be, in essence, a condition because it would be mandatory. The remaining items are would be would be considerations that would be demonstrated at time of CDP. Thank you, Mr. Antonetti. Uh, Mr. Stevens, is that also your understanding? Uh, that that's correct. Uh, however, the county the council felt very strongly in making those considerations. Uh, it, it, it's important to them that uh, you know this project include the items that I uh, that I mentioned and uh, to to really. Um, provide a, a true mixed use sustainable project on this parcel, uh, those features uh, are important to be included. Okay, thank you, Mr. Stevens. I appreciate that. And Mr. Anthony, I appreciate the clarification. Was that it for you, Mr. Diaz Campbell? Yes, sure. sir. Okay, so then, um, okay, if there is no one else, I'm going to turn back to Mr. Antonetti. Um, let me see if any of our other folks want to speak. Mr. Burton did you, or Ms. Smith, did you um, have any comment? No, ma'am. No comment from, from Glenn Burton. Okay, thank you both. Ms. Finch? Any comment, Ms. Finch? Okay, no worries. Madam uh, Chair, this is Megan Reiser for Environmental Planning. No comment. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so let's go back to Mr. Antonetti then. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, again, we appreciate the opportunity to present this case. Uh, we do support the um, suggested uh, condition and considerations uh, stated by Mr. Stevens, uh, which is, again, it should be a total of four items. Uh, the first uh, dealing with density, the remaining, um, the following dealing with workforce housing, the third dealing with um, utilization of high quality design, and the fourth dealing with um, the, uh, the investigating the viability of active adult housing at time of CDP. Um, those last three being considerations. Okay, got um, So it. we would support that, and we look forward to, to uh, coming back to you uh, with uh, further details on this project. So let me make sure I'm clear. So, that, so there are four items, and as you said, the first one would be a proposed condition, and the second three would be considerations. Um, and um, if, if um, the planning board is in support of the city's request as you, the applicant, are, and Mr. Diaz Campbell didn't have an issue with it, if, then we would just say as read into the record by um, Mr. Stevens and, and um, um, elaborated by Mr. Antonetti. 
Okay. It's good since we don't have yes. it in writing. Okay. Thank you. Um, does the board have any Thank questions you. of anyone? Madam Vice Chair? No questions. Thank you. Commissioner Washington? No question. Commissioner Geraldo? I just, I want to be clear. What will be the density on lot six of with the Sears lot? Is it 600? That would be the maximum density. Max. Okay. Give me uh, something. That's okay. Okay. okay, but that's the maximum density for lot six. That's what I wanted to be clear. Okay, thank you. No other questions, Madam Chair. Thank you. Commissioner Dorner? No questions, thank you. Okay, um, with that, is there a motion? Madam Chair, Commissioner Washington, uh, I move that we adopt the findings of staff and approve basic plan amendment A-8589-04. Along with the associated conditions and considerations as outlined in staff's report, and is further modified by applicant exhibit number one. In addition to, uh, and is read into the record uh, by the city of Bowie, Mr. Stevens, a modification to the condition with regards to maximum density of 600 mm -hmm. units, in addition to three additional considerations to include workforce housing utilization of quality design and also the viability of active adult housing second we have a motion commissioner washington seconded by commissioner geraldo i'm going to call for the um uh, vote madam vice chair but i madam chair commissioner washington aye commissioner geraldo i vote aye commissioner dorner but aye the ayes have it five zero. Thank you. Okay. Good. Thank you. Good to see you. Um, okay. So next, I'm going to. We have item three A, um, which is legislation in the CB 54 2020. I'm just going to make sure that we have Ms. Hightower on the line. Good morning, Madam Chair. Here. Good morning. Okay. With that, the, you're the only person we have on this matter. So. You're on. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the planning board, Raina Hightower, and the Governmental Affairs Coordinator. I would like to discuss CB 54 2020 with you. This bill adds and permits concrete recycling facilities in the I-1 zone under certain circumstances and prohibits the use in all other industrial zones. The bill does not state the certain circumstances under which the use would be permitted. The use is already existing under the table of uses and is permitted with special exception approval in the I-1 zone. A concrete recycling facility is a heavy labor intensive use requiring large tracts of land and is incompatible with the purposes of the I-1 zone. Uh, it is more appropriate to permit this use by right in the I-2 zone. Mm -hmm. The proposed bill conflicts with the adopted zoning ordinance, which requires special exception approval for this use. Therefore, staff recommends that the planning board vote to oppose CB 54 2020. Thank you. That concludes my presentation. Um, thank you, Ms. Hightower. Let's see if the board has any questions. I'm looking. I see no hands raised, no questions. Um, is there a motion? Madam uh, Chair, I vote. Go, go, go ahead, Commissioner Washington. No, I go ahead, Mr. Geraldo. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> go ahead. Ladies first. I move that we accept the recommendation of staff and oppose CB 54 2020. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Washington, the seconded by Commissioner Geraldo. Madam Vice Chair. Uh, Hold on. <laughs> Tad hesitant. Okay. Commissioner Washington? Aye. Commissioner Geraldo? Aye. Commissioner Dorner? Aye. Okay. The ayes have it 5 0. I think you all are a little punch drunk because, because, Mr. It's Hunt, drunk. are you on this line? Mr. Hunt, are you on this line? Yes, Madam Chair, I'm here. Okay. So, after our August recess, of course, it was really important to come break us back in kind of gently 
and we succeeded. Thank you very much. Mr. Hunt, is there any additional business to come before the planning board today? There are no additional business items before the board today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Our planning board is adjourned. Take good care, everybody. Enjoy your lunch today and enjoy the rest of the week. Thank you. Really good to see everyone. I miss you all. Take care. Commissioner Washington, did you get any did you get any